Hi everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Are you ready to take a little sweet ride with me? And I mean sweet ride in applique. I am going to show you how I do fusible applique. I'm going to use this design that is behind me, this quilt called Sweet Ride, and it's a wonderful, wonderful, simple block. Perfect for a beginner or advanced quilter. Let's get on the road. Let's see what's in our quilting basket. We have a sweet right pattern. In the pattern, you have directions for fusible, machine, or hand applique. We're going to work with fusible applique today. And this quilt is perfect to practice this technique. This pattern includes templates. They're full size. You don't have to change anything on it. You trace your designs from the templates. They're in a pattern. Sometimes when I'm making multiple pieces, I like to use stencil to draw it. So we do have a sweet right stencil and it is wonderful because with 20 blocks, my hand is going to be hurting. And I know when I'm running through the stencil, my um, drawing going to be nice and straight. You can also get a kit for this quilt. And oh, do I have a surprise for you. We have a wonderful, wonderful kit. Look at the beautiful fabrics in it. It is like a rainbow in this bag. I have included batiks, printed traditional fabrics, all put together, personally chosen for you guys. I think you're gonna enjoy this kit very, very much. If you have a little boy in your life and you wanna make this quilt for him, it is going to be super special. This is your binding. The browns right here, that's your road right there. So I have some of that fabric included for you. And those are your backgrounds. In this kit, I just picked this one. I thought we're going to do something fun. I chose a nice grays going down to creams and finish up with taupe because I want your background to shade lighter to darker as you're making your blocks. I thought this would be wonderful to do it. Let's try it. Those kits will be available on our website at www.laundrybasketquilts.com and I hope you grab one of them. You're going to need fusible webbing for fusible applique. There are many fusible webbings on, um, uh, on, in different stores online. We're going to use the heat and bond light today. You can also use the um, um, a hot fix. It's wonderful. The only difference between the two, this is smaller, this is bigger. So you get more cars, you get less cars. I'm going to do this one because I'm making this quilt a little bit smaller for one of my little friends. I have in my basket a variety of threads and I'm going to tell you more about those threads as we are making the block. I am going to use this thread from my quilt because I want a cotton finish around the edges. So this is Orofil and this is number 2910. And I want to just bring a project back to you, show you this. You're going to say, oh my gosh, green thread for all the colors. This color green, I put it all the way all around all the pieces, pinks, greens, blues, and it works wonderful. So the green is very, very nice to use on any colors, and that's the one I'm planning to do. But I'm going to show you other options as well. Since we're doing fusible applique, we need a nonstick needle, and this wonderful super nonstick needle for Schmitz, Size 80 will work perfect for the thread that I'm planning to use. And I love my five inch scissors, four and a half, four and a half inch scissors. And we're going to use those today. If you don't have one of those little cutting boards and on this side ironing board, I highly recommend for fusible applique. Those are really nice. I use it all the time and I'm going to show you some of that board when I'm um, ironing my pieces. All right, let's start. One car at a time. So we have a wonderful fabric. We have a light for a background and we're going to choose two pieces from our stash. And what we're going to do is once we cut all the pieces out, we're going to swap them. So on one car, the car is orange and the wheels are blue. Uh, someplace else I have a blue car and an orange wheels so you can swap those so if you're making it you will make two blocks right away you're gonna start by choosing your fusible webbing you're gonna take your fusible webbing and you're gonna grab uh, your pencil 
I have a just simple pencil. Where's my stencil? This is going to be right next to me. And I'm going to place my stencil right on my fusible webbing. And I'm going to draw it. And look at how quickly I can draw. And all that you need is to draw one car and two wheels and two bumpers. Oh, that is going to be so exciting. This is a cute little car. Oh, let's don't forget those windows. We need those windows. So all oh, am I doing it? I'm running a regular pencil through my um, uh, stencil and I drew my car. I'm going to finish up with the wheels. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to be ready to fuse it to my fabric. So I have one that I already finished, one card, two wheels, two bumpers, and I'm going to grab one of my fabrics. Oh, this is a wonderful piece of a batik. Let me grab my ironing board, move all those things out of my way. And what I like to do is I take my fabric and you're going to fuse um, this onto the wrong side of the fabric. You just want to gently press it so you release the fusible webbing. But before I place my fusible webbing onto my fabric, I always make sure there's no crinkles in my fabric. And look at that crinkle in this fabric. So what I'm going to do is beautifully press it. Oh, this feels nice a little bit warmer wonderful this iron is warming up and i have my iron set on medium setting it's not too hot and it's not too uh, cold oh this feels good i always check like with my hand i place it down up oh, yep yeah, it's not too hot perfect wonderful now i'm gonna take my fusible um design fusible webbing with the design on it i want to make sure that i'm in the boundaries i'm going to center it up if it doesn't fit this way don't even worry rotate this way just fit your design it looks good where i have it placed all that i'm gonna do is take my iron and gently press it down gently press it down and this is important you do not want to over press it you don't want don't want to press it too hard why because your goal is not to fuse the paper to fabric forever and ever. You only want to release the fusible webbing so that way you can fuse this, the fabric, to fabric later on. So the first time you're pressing, nice and gentle. As soon as you finish pressing, you're going to go ahead, grab your wonderful scissors. I'm going to put that iron down so I don't get in the way. And I'm going to have my car and I'm going to go ahead and with my wonderful scissors, I'm going to cut it right on a line, right on a line. Oh, just like this, right on a line. Oh, this is wonderful. And I'm making nice, smooth cuts. Do you notice it? How nice, smooth long smooth cuts i'm emphasizing this you do not want to take your scissors and do a little tiny nibbles with the beginning of your scissors you want a nice smooth wonderful cuts just like this so you can then cut your car right out oh this is gonna be so much fun oh wonderful it is just a pleasure to cut it and I'm going to finish cutting this side because I want to show you how I get into the windows. The outside of the car, it's easy to cut it. You just cut on a line. But how do you get into those windows to cut them out? So look at this. Nice and simple. Fold it. Gently clip it in the middle. Did you see what I just did? That way I can put my scissors right into it. And now... I can cut my windows right out. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, this is going to be a great quilt for a little boy. Oh, so much fun. And you know what? If you have a, a little boy or little girl that loves cars and you want to take them and have them choose the fabric, this would be delightful. Let's do one more window together and we're going to have our car cut out. You guys are just have been a wonderful with this. And what I would do is if I'm making a large quilt, I would iron all my cars and do all of them cutting all at the same time. Then start 
color coordinating my cars. This is going to be wonderful. What a beautiful rainbow car. Oh, I am so excited about this one. So look at this. Isn't that delightful? So the next step, it is, I have one started right here. We're going to get our background. I have placed my street on the background already and in your pattern you have two different directions for doing the street. You can fuse it, so applique it, or you can go ahead and cut it and seam a one inch strip. Follow the directions in the pattern, they're super easy to do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one piece at a time and look at it. I gently crease the corner. Did you see how I creased it? Let me show you this again. Gently like this and look what happened. Do you see how it's separated? Now I'm going to go ahead and peel this paper away. Wonderful. Peel the paper away. You have to be gentle so you don't accidentally peel it away something more than just the paper. And I'm going to place my car and I'm going to go ahead and grab my wheels and add to it. I have blue wheels for my car, a cute little bumpers one after the other. Oh, this one st still have a paper on. Let me crease it gently and look at, peel it away and place it down. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. Isn't that a cute little car? Or maybe you want a different color. Let me try this blue one. That's the original fabric that we have chose for that first car we are making together. Look how sweet. Oh, he's going down the hill. Fast, fast, fast. Just like we are with our applique. What a beautiful low block. Now, once I have all my pieces positioned really nice, I pay attention that I give myself enough room for my seam allowance right here. So I can lift actually this car a little bit up and move it because I want to be equally here and here, just about an inch from the edge. Let me move those wheels. Oh, super cute. Don't rush. Don't rush with it. Just position it really, really nice. And there is a little spacing right here. And I did this because then you can fit your stitching when you're doing your low applique. If you decide zigzag, blanket stitch, satin stitch. All right, we have our car in place. We're gonna go ahead, get our iron. It's set on a medium setting. It's nice and warm. And now I'm gonna go ahead and gently press it from the top, just like this, press it from the top. We do not wanna over press so that fusible webbing doesn't like melt right through our fabric, but we want to uh, press it enough that it holds in place for us to be able to stitch. Fusible applique, lightweight heat and bound, it's only like a stabilizer to hold the pieces in place as you're going to go ahead and work on those. And what I do is I wait a few seconds, I che uh, check that it cools off, and I take my project and I'm going to roll it. And look, this is popping off. It means that I didn't press it enough. Anything else is popping off? No, just that low tail end. So let's do it one more time. Better press it twice than press it too hard. And then it's overpress. And you know, sometimes if you overpress, the pieces fall off because the fusible web webbing just melted away. Wonderful. Now we have our beautiful project and we need to choose stitches and how we're going to applique. So let me show you some wonderful option for stitching. First one, let's try just a simple zigzag and we're going to hide the stitch. So if you want to hide the stitch using nylon invisible thread is the way to go. I'm going to use nylon invisible on the top. I'm going to use 2370 in a bobbin. I'm going to lower my tension down and I'm going to use a zigzag and I'm going to have a, um, this a nonstick needle into uh, my machine and small zigzag. I'm going to go all the way around all of the edges, pull it back, stitch it. You want to go as long as you can without cutting the thread to go around. Let me show you the stitch in the back and the size of the zigzag. Notice it. And that cotton thread 2370 is wonderful because it pulls it down the top thread and it hides. You're going to lower the tension a little bit because you want that 
our top tension to let the thread go down a little bit but not too much and it's gonna be just wonderful if you don't like invisible thread I totally understand you're probably gonna want to use this stitch and I'm using yellow thread here because I really want you to be able to see it the size of a zigzag but what I would do for my cars I would use this beautiful 2910 orophil green thread I think it's gonna be stunning over all the uh, cars and I would use a cotton thread weight 50 2370 for a bobbin again I would have used that same super non-stick needle in my machine and I would go ahead and stitch a zigzag with a cotton thread staying all the way around the edges and you want to cradle your edge cradle that edge in a nice zigzag all the way around it to applique another option if you feel confident and you want to show off some of the stitches your blanket stitch your uh, that comes with your machine it's wonderful and again I'm using yellow thread to really pop it but I like the stitch and Bronina has a wonderful size of that stitch on that machine it is great and again I would have used green thread uh, for the top I would use the 2370 for the bobbin this wonderful non-stick needle and I would stitch all the way around it you can also do raw edge applique for fusible applique for this particular quilt i'm not planning to do it but i'm going to show you what you do is you can go ahead and just straight stitch all the way uh, the edges all the edges would be raw this is called raw edge applique the three stitches that i show you before it was fusible finish edge applique this is fusible raw edge applique all the edges are raw and they're exposed for fraying so that's another option so now once you go ahead and stitch choose your stitch go all the way around the car you're gonna go inside the um, windows and I just want to remind you every time you start you're gonna leave it a nice long thread and you're gonna go ahead later on pull that thread to the back so that way you can go ahead and pull it to the back and weave it look the thread is right here I would weave it through my stitch back here to hide it so that's very important to do it and you don't want a little threads hanging the beginnings and the end but basically I would start up right here I would go ahead let me bring this closer I would start up right here I would go ahead go around the bumper go again go up finish go around the bumper go again go down finish if you want it you can jump to the wheel go around the wheel come back and then go around this wheel and all that you have to do inside the wheels and on the outside of your windows once you have your block stitch the applique would be secure in a place you're gonna go ahead and make enough blocks to put them into rows and then sew your rows together and you're ready to take this baby on the road with you and either hand quilt or machine quilt and you're gonna have a wonderful wonderful quilt and just a quick reminder if you want it to switch the direction of your car is as quick as just flipping the stencil so that way you have your cars going in opposite way if you would like to do that i hope you enjoyed that sweet ride with me please make sure subscribe onto our youtube channel and do visit our website at laundrybasketquilts.com and i am so thankful you took the time and want to do a little bit of fusible applique with me and have a nice sweet ride happy quilting Thank you.